creativity for me when I was younger was mostly uh, was, was mostly an outlet. And the reason being is, you know, I, I struggled with a lot of things when I was younger. Um, I think I thought differently than a lot of people my age growing up. I thought differently than a lot of people in my household. So I didn't connect very well um, with other people, you know. Um, not to say that I was necessarily introvert, but my ideas made me become introvert. So I didn't have a lot of time or opportunities to express how I felt. So um, very quickly I was expressing my feelings and my thoughts, which would conventionally or traditionally be spoken to other people, I'd speak that through art. So I did that in fictional writing first, and, and, and that carried me for about five or six years through my youth. So I began to create these stories, and um, I, I essentially lived in them uh, for, for a lot of my waking hours, and I, I, I really got good at story building, uh, world building, and, and being creative. So um, more than anything, it was an outlet for me to discover who I was and to get out what I needed to get out to the world, uh, whether or not it actually made it to, uh, to the actual print of a book or online. It, it was on paper, it was in my room, and I got to um, experience these worlds in an intimate way. For film, I would say uh, Terrence Malick, David Fincher, and Quentin Tarantino more than anybody and for the following reasons. Uh, I enjoy Terrence Malick because, not to go too deep, but what I think Terrence Malick grasps better than most filmmakers is, is really, you know, to put it plainly, the meaning of life. And I think he's able to translate, you know, the essence of what this experience is in a sort of Taoist way that is so compelling and so deep that when you watch his films, there may be no words for five, 10 minutes, and more meaning will be spoken in those 10 minutes than many filmmakers can do in two hours. So I like him for that and his ability to take an image and tell you a million things. His pictures are literally worth a thousand words. For David Fincher, it's his boldness and his uh, courage to push the limits um, in whatever decade, whatever culture he's in, he says, you know, basically, fuck you. Um, we're doing it my way and I'm going to make you uncomfortable and you're going to look back eventually and realize why this was important. And, you know, Fight Club is one of, absolutely one of my favorite films. And of course, this is mostly Chuck's work, but Fincher's adaptation, it, it's almost as if no one else could have done it but Fincher. And so I appreciate him deeply. Um, for everything he does. I love his, um, his, his simplicity in cinematography for his desires, you know, as far as how he goes with cinematography, um, expressed, expressing his deep stories through um, simple cinematography. You know, he puts everything on sticks. You barely ever see a moving shot on him and he does it so well that it's um, seamless. You don't even notice it. And, you, and, it's, and it's never boring. Um, he does such a good job with his actors. He does such a good job with the framing that he, you could give him a tripod and a thousand dollar camera and he'll blow your mind. Uh, lastly, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino is the master of realness in dialogue. Uh, there is nobody, in my opinion, uh, that really can do what he does on the scale and the level that he's at. Um, being in Hollywood where, you know, the big explosions and, 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 and the CG is what rules, he steps in and says, no, we're, we're, we're telling stories. We're telling stories that aren't necessarily things that you would find in real life, yet feel absolutely real. Um, one of the best scenes um, in, in film history, I think, is the scene um, with the Frenchman and the Jew Hunter in Inglorious Bastards. And it's, that is a clinic on how to write good dialogue that feels real, how to build suspense in such an incredible way that it leaves you feeling like you're right there sitting at the table with them. So those are my main inspirations with film. I could go into music and all that, but I feel like I've already talked quite a bit. Creativity. And, and I guess what I mean by that is... Um, I can build out a world. I can build out a world. I can give it rules. 
Um, I can make it feel worn in. I think that's that's been my strength for a long time. Is that you know you could give me, um, you could give me one character with one purpose, and I could turn that into um, a lifelong journey, and 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 make the mundane into grandiose. Creativity. I can make the mundane into grandiose, and then I can make the grandiose too grandiose. And that's usually what happens with a lot of my failures is that I get too creative and I get too big to the point where it's open-ended and there's a sequel and a prequel and I haven't even written the actual story. And, I, and I'll throw myself into that corner constantly. So I have to be very cognizant of that and aware of, of, of the fact that I do do that. And I'll have people in my life that, that I've told, you know, I say, hey, if, if I start, you know, going off the rails and adding another character that doesn't need to be there, tell me, you know, be, be critical. I guess that's something that's really helped me is that I've, I've gotten a nice group of people that feel very comfortable being brutally honest with me. And so that I, that I can keep that in check. So, yeah, my strength is also my weakness. Terrence McKenna, um, he's no longer with us. And I think he... He is an artist in a different way. Um, he was what you might call a bard, a poet. But more than anything, he was a speaker and he was a thinker and he, he was a fixer. He, wanted, he, he looked at the way the world was and he didn't see the world as problematic. He saw the world as phenomenal. Like things just were happening. Everything is phenomenon and everything is, is, is happening as a result of the things that happened before. But he was always working toward progress. And if he was here today with the struggles that we're having today, he'd be the perfect person to talk to about the world struggles. And also he would be the perfect person, he'd also be the perfect person to talk to about individual struggles. I, I wish I had a time machine um, so I could go back and see him. The, out of all people in history, I think he'd be the one I'd want to, to reach out to. The one I'm on now. I, I wouldn't change anything. Um, I mean, a million dollars is a decent amount of money and it, it can do just about anything if, if you know what you're doing and you don't let money let you think too big. So what I'm doing now, um, it's a series called Field of Dreams and we're working on the first episode now actually. And it, the concept basically is, is that um, it's a unipolar world, a unipolar world, which means that there's one uh, government, country, sovereign nation in charge of the whole world. It is the only superpower. And they have allotted a certain amount of space on the planet to um, run a little test and let people run their own sovereign nations on a micro level. And so we're working on the first episode now. It's a suspense uh, show. It's mystery. Uh, it's also political and philosophical. So obviously it, entertainment is important to entertain the people but underlying all that is an important philosophical and political message basically it questions you know what we're doing right now is it working uh and the answer i think to that is no and the reason being is because we keep trying to add something new and make modifications to our political system and for the last hundred years we've had massive failures that, that have um uh left us with hundreds of millions of people dead you know, because we wanted to try something new. Because the old way isn't working, but all the new ways that we keep trying are, are failing us in even more tragic ways. So what this, this show is, is basically a, a critique of governments, of politics, of philosophies, in an effort to maybe not answer the question, but ask enough questions so that somebody can answer it. Work. Do the work. You want to be a cameraman? You surround yourself with cameras. You work with a camera. Give yourself an hour, two hours, three hours a day and don't tell me you don't have that time. You do. You always do. Do you have social media? Do you use it? Do you sign in? Do you post stuff? Um, do, you, do you hang out and party? Do you have a show that you watch? This is all time that you could be spending on that, but if you want to make it, you're going to have to work harder than everyone else. Elon Musk said something great. He said, um, you know, if you work 100 hours a week as opposed to your, your, your uh, rival or your, your competitor works 40 hours a week, you're going to get done um, in about, you know, two-thirds of the time or one-third of the time uh, what they would get done in, in, in that full time. So I think he broke it down to like 
four or five months of, of work as opposed to a year's work. So you got to do, you got to put the hours in. They say 10,000 hours to mastery, but 10,000 hours isn't how much you need. It's more like 500 to 1,000. You could be kick ass or whatever you want to do, but you've got to do the work. And secondly, um, there is a balance. There is a balance of, of give and take. If you give too much, you'll kill yourself trying to make it. If you take too much, you will, you will, you will jade people and you will, and you will, you will take people who have dreams and aspirations to do great things and they will lose the taste for battle. You will take their passion. You will take their work. You have to be careful of how you work with people. Communicate effectively. Be honest. Say what's on your mind. There's a right way to say everything. If you don't say it, um, that's your problem and that's your fault. Film, for instance, is collaborative, but almost everything is collaborative. Unless you're writing a book and editing it too, all by yourself and, and, and on your typewriter, you have to work with other people on this. You're not going to be able to do everything yourself. So you have to work well with others. And don't ever see yourself as the king of the castle. You, you will always fail. Be a part of the bigger thing. Don't be a snowflake. Be a gear in the machine working towards something greater than yourself. So do the work communicate honestly and effectively with other people and be a part of the team. If you do those three things, you cannot fail. Uh, let me think about that. Well, you know, fuck bitches, get money. No. Um, basically, that's a great question. Um, and it's such a hard question to answer because when I was younger, it's like to be a famous actor, or be the best director, or, or, or win an Oscar, and all, none of that means anything to me anymore. Um, what I want to do as an artist, my major accomplishment is to be, to make, to affect the world in such a way and to make such a great change that moves us toward progress, that moves us toward more harmony uh, for each other for our planet, um, for all sentient beings that experience um, feeling and, and emotion, and to bring us closer, bring us, bring us all closer together so we can do greater things. So our struggles aren't poverty and hunger, our struggles are how quick can we get to Mars. I, I guess that's, that's what I, I want to do, and I think that's the artist's um, most important um, endeavor. Um, an artist isn't here to make art for themselves and, 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 and collect fame and, and notoriety. An artist's job is to see the world as it is, understand what it could be, and then create something so persuasive that the world comes together to move us in that direction. So I guess my major goal as an artist is to influence, but to influence for the greater good. You're very welcome. Do I just like levitate like... Get the fuck out of here. Alright, I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm sorry. I'm leaving.